Hello everyone, today we are going to discuss about solar radiance. The amount of electricity produced by solar panel is almost fully dependent on the amount of solar radiance. So in this context, solar radiance is a main parameter, main measure to know how much the panel can produce. So you know very well that the solar radiation is the resource to generate electricity by using solar panels. So here solar radiation is a resource. So how we measure the solar radiation is the parameter that is a solar radiance. So the sun emits the energy and that energy reaches the earth. So how much energy we receive or the solar panels is receives is uh, the measure of solar radiance. So in this context, there are a lot of research going on about how to predict the solar radiation. Okay, so solar radiance is uh, measuring, uh, we, we sometimes measure every hour, what is a solar radiance in every hour. Like if you take, if you go visit a meteorology department, they have the devices to measure the solar radiation, radiance of every hour, every half an hour, or every five minutes interval so usually researchers collect the uh, data from the meteorology department and using that data they do the modeling and simulation to predict how much electricity we can produce tomorrow next month next year so likewise a lot of prediction modeling statistical basically statistical based modeling uh, going on with the research ideas it all depends on uh, the solar radiance. So solar, because the solar radiance is a heart of the topic. So the key to generate electricity using solar panels. So the science behind the solar panels, the resource is a solar radiance. So in this context, we have to understand deeper into the basics of solar radiance and uh, what are the things going on so that is the purpose of today's video okay so we have to understand like likewise what i am saying in all videos we have to understand all the terminologies and the very basics and in a, in a deeper sense okay so what is solar radiance solar radiance is the power per unit area received from the sun in the form of electromagnetic radius as i said we are as a receiver solar panels we have the solar panels solar panels going to receive the energy so from the receiver point of view what how much energy i am receiving per unit in a unit area like in a meter square how much i am receiving that is the watt per meter square okay how how much watt what is the energy we are receiving per meter square so that's a, typically the measures a watt per square meter okay represents solar energy reaching a particular area in the earth actually we particular area mean we are mentioning the solar panels so we need more solar radiance to be received in our panels if we receive more solar radiation we generate more electricity actually the, the solar radiance is a is a measure solar radiation is an energy solar radiation is a simple terminology solar radiation is an energy the way we measure the the measurement name is solar radiance so solar radiance is a unit is watt per meter square in a meter square how much energy we are receiving in the earth okay that is a solar radiance so what are the main types of solar radiance there are direct solar radiance and diffuse solar radiance so direct solar radiance mean this is the solar power that travel directly from the sun to the earth without being scattered or reflected by the atmosphere. That's why I always highlight the keywords. If we are receiving the solar radiations, that comes without being scattered by or reflected by atmosphere, okay? Without being disturbed by the atmosphere, like uh, molecules and other things, okay? So if we receive directly to the earth, that is a direct solar radiance. It's very simple. Without any disturbance, if it is come directly to the earth, then that is a direct solar radiance. So what is diffuse solar radiance mean? This is a solar power that has been scattered by the molecules and particles in the atmosphere 
reaching the earth surface so obviously this if if some uh, molecules particles are disturbing this solar radiance and then it is reaching the earth mean definitely that path will disturb i mean there is a well, straight path and there are some molecules disturbing the path so definitely is a different path it's it reaches so with the disturbance diffuse solar radiance mean with the disturbance in atmosphere still we reach, reach uh, we receiving the solar radiance uh, that solar radiation we are receiving the solar radiation energy is the solar radiation that measurement is called diffuse solar radiation radiance so two things direct solar radiance we are directly measuring how much we we are measuring how much direct solar radiation reaching the earth diffuse solar radi radiance we are measuring how much diffused disturbed solar radiance radiation we are receiving to the earth so simple okay so now we look at some basics how this uh, solar radiation radiation is created by earth so it's a science it's a basically science okay thanks to the temperature in the every second 600 million tons of hydrogen is being converted to helium by undergoing reaction called fusion so we might study in science what is fusion fission so it's a fusion fusion is making the 600 million tons fusion mean two atoms are joining then i mean the helium atoms are joining uh, sorry hydrogen atoms are joining two hydrogen atoms are joining and making the helium atom so it's a very basic science it's a fusion and if you want to understand fusion you can uh, by uh, understanding the direct opposite that's a fission fission means that the atoms are breaking up okay breakdown of nuclear of atom and release energy in the ag agreement with the famous equation e e equal to mc square so fission mean the atoms are breaking that is a nuclear energy okay in the nuclear uh, energy or nuclear power generation we study that fission fission is a we are breaking the uh, atom by using external force or some 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 things okay so we are breaking the atom that is the fission but what is fusion mean it is we are joining the atom so very simple that's a basic science i'm not going deep into that science you can understand so by joining the two atom we are releasing a lot of energy 600 million tons of hydrogen is being converted into helium 600 million every second 600 million tons of hydrogen is being converted into helium so how hydrogen being converted is by joining we can make that fusion is joining the hydrogen we are making heliums okay so very simple in every second about 108 such fusion reactions are happening in the sun and it releases 3.85 into 1038 watts okay so this is uh, this is what the fusion reaction is going on okay this is a science basically science okay so now let's look at the the solar radiance okay the the we are uh, sun is uh, emitting the solar radiation that is uh, what we need we just understand the science behind that but that's not our major thing what we need is uh, so sun uh, is emitting the solar radiation and our earth is situated here sometimes we are rotating so sometimes we are reaching the minimum distance that is 147.5 million kilometers if we are reaching we are uh, sitting in this minimum distance we are lucky because we will get more more radiations okay sometimes we reach a maximum distance very far away like 152.1 million kilometer sometimes it will be in the average position like 149.5 million kilometer so a huge distance from the sun but we are still getting the solar radiation energy reached to the earth so this is a position because of the entire earth position changes okay the the energy amount of energy we are receiving will be changed okay there is a purpose of uh, this uh, picture okay now these again we have understanding here the radiation can be transmitted absorbed or scattered by an intervention medium varying amount depending on the wavelength so 
as i already already said the direct radiation and the diffuse radiation and we can uh, tell another uh, uh, thing is a global radians global radiation means it's a combination it's an addition of both okay we are, we are getting the uh, direct radiation and diffuse radiation if we add both we will get the global radians okay this is a simple thing we can understand this picture clearly tells that how it is a direct this is a direct this is a diffuse okay because there are some disturbance here so it's coming like this way and look you can see that this is coming in this way and then diffuse okay so likewise this is a direct this is a direct direct to the panel okay there's no disturbance direct to the panel but look at this this is a falling on the surface then reflected these are reflected okay and likewise this is on the cloud this is coming to the cloud and uh, from the cloud is diffused disturbed by the cloud and falling into the panel it will come to the panel okay if there's no disturbance it's go like this way directly this way okay so these are the things we can understand what is diffuse and direct radiation okay so here is a, we can say in the technical word like direct normal radiance and diffuse horizontal radiance and global horizontal radiance. These are the three uh, things we are using in the equations and the parameters. The same thing, direct radi normal mean direct radiation. The beam radiation is measured at the surface of the earth at a given location on the surface element perpendicular to the sun. This is the key. If we measure, we all, we are happy if the uh, sun is perpendicular to the, our panel. We already, uh, uh, explain in previous videos we always try to make the panel uh, appear in 90 degree I mean most of the time but it's not possible because Sun is moving so from morning to evening it's moving so we try to get 90 degree position if it is possible most of the time let's say three hours four hours or two hours is happy so the key is if it is perpendicular to the Sun that is a direct normal radiance okay so that here, this is the position is perpendicular to the sun. This is we call the direct normal radiance. Okay, direct normal radiance. Normal, this word, we are adding this word because we want to make sure the 90 degree is perpendicular to the sun. The, is a direct radiance and a direct normal radiance. It's not direct radiance means, okay, let's say we put the panel. We already explained that what is a di uh, direct and diffuse. This is a solar PV panel, okay. It is the sun okay if we getting the uh, uh, sun energy direct like this this is a direct radiance but this is not the direct normal radiance this is not 90 degree there's an angle here let's say 30 degree okay so let's say panel is a big panel okay it's a big panel okay let's say this is a big panel so this is a 30 degree so this is not the direct normal but if we are receiving if sun is moving to the here or somewhere if we are receiving direct to this point okay direct 90 degree if it is 90 degree then it's a direct normal radiance okay and diffuse horizontal radiation radiance is a radiance at the earth's surface from the light scattered by the atmosphere it is measured on the horizontal surface with radiance coming from all points this is the key all point of the sky okay all points so this is this is a measure we are adding all the diffuse radiance if you look at these small arrows we are adding everything to the particular point particular point we are adding all the diffuse radiance and saying this is a value okay so there. so now we need to understand and find the global horizontal radiance this is a global horizontal radiance as i said is a summation of direct and diffuse okay direct radius so let's say the so US Sun is sitting at here okay situated here so now this is as your solar panels okay your solar panels okay so this is a direction of this uh, solar radius reaching the panel so this is not a 90 degree so it's some angle that angle we call solar zenith angle we uh, please watch the previous videos these are the technical that's why we learn the angles about the angles this is a zenith angle okay 
so this is in the angle but we if it is if if it is uh, like this so if sun is here if sun is here then this is your direct normal radius d n i if sun is here we are receiving d n i but now sun is here so we are not receiving d n i but we are receiving d n i cos sinit angle because we are not receiving d n i d n i cos sinit angle we are receiving a d n i cos sinit angle okay so and plus we are receiving the horizontal direct horizontal radiation that's plus we adding all the blue color the arrows with the blue colors these are the diffuse we are coming from different directions that's why you put everywhere because diffuse radiation comes from all the direction we are adding all and measure the diffuse in directly we are adding all the diffuse radians and measuring for this case there's a just we know that if it is 90 degree if it is at 90 degree we will get this one dni so that is a certain value if it is at 90 degree we know this is a d9 now our radiation radiance uh, sun position is changed so we will get the dni cos sinit angle okay it's very very simple dni cos sinit angle is my how direct radiance we are receiving direct radiance we are receiving how much direct radiance we are receiving equal to what is the direct normal radiance multiplied by cos of angle sinit angle that is a sinit angle that is clear okay so let's look at the next slide so this is how we adding all the what is a graph is you you might see this graph everywhere whenever they are talking about solar radiance okay usually solar radiation have the graph like this because it started in some like uh, sorry I, I draw here started at around 8 a.m maybe 7 a.m some places 8 a.m somewhere and it stopped stopped around 5 p.m maybe 5 p.m so there's a 5 p.m or sometimes 6 p.m okay so it's like here it's like uh, 6 o'clock it started at 6 o'clock and slowly it's very minimal maybe it's, it's here it's like uh, like 8 o'clock so and uh, it's ended at 6 o'clock 6 here is 6 o'clock around 7 o'clock it stops so, so here what are the radians diffuse radians this is a small part this is a diffuse in the blue color <laughs> it's a small portion because diffuse radiation is compared to the direct radians diffuse radiation is less then we have the direct radians that's a and they're like a uh, here is a diffuse radians if we add both we will get the total global radians the radiation the total global radiation so this is the graph everywhere if you take any research paper uh, they don't talk about uh, global and uh, diffuse if, if it's really about the solar radiance but if you about predicting the uh, solar power output or solar power generation they have this graph always they have this graph okay this graph like that okay so they are talking about watt per meter square that's solar radiance with respect to time so this is the key is uh, with respect to time your yeah, solar radiance value is changing only during this peak time peak time maybe your uh, one hour or uh, uh, half an hour or two hours or maybe a small period of time it's constant okay this is a key here so we almost come to the end we understand what is a radiance what are the type of radiance we have there basically is a direct and diffuse simple direct and diffuse and how to account or how to calculate the um, total or global uh, solar radiance okay what is sinit angle application of sinit angle here because sinit angle tells that uh, from the uh, direct normal radiance how much i'm deviating so that's all the uh, uh, the explanation here there's a purpose of this uh, video is to explain about the parameters and importance of solar radiance thank you very much please subscribe the channel uh, we'll see you in next video